John and Michael Darling sat on Michael's bed, listening to their sister, Wendy, tell them a story about their favorite hero, Peter Pan. And then, what he said, with a quick slash of his sword, Peter Pan cut the evil Captain Hook's hand right off. Michael and John cast. Their dog, Nana, jumped to her feet, too. But Nana wasn't alarmed by Wendy's story. She had heard a strange noise coming from just outside the window. There it was again. Nana scurried over to the window and poked her head outside. Then, crouched on a narrow ledge, was a red-headed boy dressed in green from head to toe. Nana froze. Then she slowly leaned toward the boy, growling a low, warning growl. There, there, Nana, the boy whispered softly. Please don't bark. The sound of her name, Nana froze again. She tilted her head to one side, wondering if she knew this boy somehow, and how he knew her name. You're wondering how I know your name. The boy whispered. You see, I've come here now and again to listen to one of your stories. Stories about me. He stood up straight and puffed his chest out proudly. I'm Peter Pan, you know. Now, Nana was not a mean dog, but there was one thing, well, three things, really, that she was very protective of, and they were the three children inside the nursery. And I knew it was up to her to make sure that they were safe and sound. She also knew the strange boy crouching up in the nursery window, either Pan or not, were not to be tolerated. And so, with another low growl, Nana suddenly lunged farther out the window and snapped her teeth at Peter Pan. The boy flew out of the way just in time. But the shadow was not so quite, was not quite so fast. It shrugged, it struggled to get loose but it was held tight in Nana's mouth. Peter Pan laughed merrily and flew off. It was time to begin his journey home to Neverland. But he would be back for Shadow, and next time he would need to go inside. Love you. Good night.